Welcome back to Nom Talk Network and Basic Binges. Um, I'm your host, Mike Manalo, and this week we are going to be recapping She-Hulk, Episode 6. Uh, with me today are some dear friends of mine. Um, we've got, uh, I'll start with you, Smash, if that's all right. We got Smash Catchem in the house. Hey, Smash. Hello. Give her intro? <laughs> uh, hey, I'm Smash Catchem. Uh, I embraced the wedding theme this week for sure, inconvenient wedding, and uh, I'm nomming on uh, some what we're going to pretend is champagne in my uh, bridal wine glass and a uh, piece of cake that I managed to snag before uh, Titania showed up. So <laughs> Titania, excuse me. That's all right. I, I, I did not expect somebody to just randomly bring out wedding cake <laughs> <in the middle laughs> of stream. That is pretty awesome. Um, Any excuse. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank, thank you for doing that, Smash. Um, and of course, uh, joining us for another round of She-Hulk recaps is the great Jennifer AP. How are you, Jen? I'm doing well. How are you, Mike? Doing good. Thanks. Are you drink are you noshing on anything right now? I have some um, as I think She-Hulk appropriate wasabi peas. Um, because I hate my taste buds. And my my all-time holy grail shock top twisted pretzel. Um, they haven't made this for a number of years. And then when they did make it for the first time last year in like five, six years, it didn't get to California. So I found some, I went and bought a fair amount for myself and my sister and left some for other people. So I will be enjoying that tonight. Very nice. As a shock top fan, I actually have to try that. Yeah. You're recommending it to me. It sounds delicious. I cannot yeah, wait to is. actually to give that a shot. Um, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mike Manalo. Um, I've been with Nom Talk Network for a little bit. And um, yeah, I've been recapping She-Hulk, but I missed last week. So I apologize for you guys, uh, to you guys for that. Um, but from what I heard, you had an amazing host in our producer, Stephanie, who just did a terrific job and always does a terrific job every day uh, that we have a show on. So uh th stephanie thank you for filling in uh last minute for me and um and then thank you for everything that you do for us um before we get started with the episode well uh first off um in, in the grand tradition of everyone kind of revealing what they're noshing on i'm just drinking water um but that could not be more appropriate because we do have a quick announcement for all of you fans uh you bingers out there um essentially we have we at basic binges and at nomtalk network have gotten twitch affiliated which means um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, uh, such as myself 10 minutes ago, um, like the, the Twitch affiliation actually means that you are eligible to uh, earn Nomdo, basically. Um, and what that means is uh, at any point when you're earning Nomdo, you can redeem that Nomdo to make all of us do something incredibly fun or incredibly silly on the screen if you guys want to. I mean, nothing gross, nothing. This is a family show, guys. But um, basically, it would allow you guys to choose from a set number of activities like hydrate. If somebody were to tell us to hydrate, we'd bring out the water, we'd chug that down. Um, or uh, to, for example, make us talk in third person. Um, so much like the Hulk, Mike would talk like this for the entire duration of Mike's hosting duties. Um, so a lot of fun five stuff minutes. like that. Yeah, for five minutes. <laughs> For five minutes uh during yeah not not the whole time oh. so, i i would i would i would i would accept that challenge though if somebody would oh. put on me. um oh. but i i feel like that would be the douchiest thing i could ever do um is is talk like uh an 80s businessman in the third person but um i could do it for five minutes for you guys if you guys want to um so having said that um yeah i i'm wondering if we guys if we want to get into it yeah like she hulk episode yeah. six shall we That's get into awesome. it awesome all right all right um so i think as we always do i'd love to just hear a general consensus from everyone uh jen i'd love to start with you uh your thoughts on the whole episode well i need a t-shirt of the title card just jen because oftentimes that's how when people say what do you prefer to be called i say just jen so i was like oh, yay um it's had its ups and downs so i i enjoyed parts of it a great deal and then a couple parts I actually wrote notes down because I was like wait this doesn't make sense she's just Jen but then she's so upset that no one wants her to be She-Hulk at the wedding so you know it was like I'm like all right so she's contradicting herself here um I thought that and this is a pattern for every episode Nikki was 
provided the most fun. I think she's quickly becoming my favorite character. So, um, and I would love a series of her and Pug shopping for shoes. Um, that would be fantastic. But overall, I enjoyed it. Um, not my favorite episode, even though at first I was like, oh, this is my favorite because it has just Jen. But uh, yeah, that changed by the end of the episode. So not the strongest episode, but I enjoyed it. Smash, how about you? Um, I mean, Inconvenient Wedding episode is what it is. Uh, they, you know, drop us with the Daredevil hel helmet at the end of the last episode. They can't just give us what we want and, you know, introduce us to Matt Murdock right away. Real life has to happen first. Uh, some high school girl that, you know, uh, you know, needs you to be a bridesmaid. Um, so, yeah, I was just laughing along with it. And of course, the bridezilla, everything tacky that she was doing was just like wrong, wrong, wrong way to be a person, wrong way to be a bride. Um, yeah, with just little, little bit bits of undertones of the real story peeking through. And of course, uh, Mallory and, and Nikki bonding and getting to see a little bit more of uh, Mallory Book's character was was just great. I'm loving the the woman energy on this show is just every day and every week. I'm just like, gimme, 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 gimme. Feminism is awesome on this show. Honestly, I, I do appreciate that about She-Hulk a lot. Um, I will say I, you know, in a lot of ways, I kind of agree with, with Jen to a, to a certain extent. I think it had its ups and downs. I think very much it is a filler episode in some ways. Um, I, you know, for someone that is invested in the storyline with the Wrecking Crew or the potential tease of Matt Murdock, and, and by the way, just for the record, for all the online trolls out there that are bashing the show just because we didn't get Daredevil, uh, you know, I mean, that's not a reason to bash a show. I mean, go into it with Daredevil or without Daredevil because it's She-Hulk, guys. You're here to watch She-Hulk. She tells you in the third episode, this is her show. It needs to stay her show. I'm happy with it staying her show. I think, honestly, the, the lack of Mac Murdoch could have been saved if you had a very strong story or strong like narrative or you progress the plot line pretty well. I do think that they actually stalled a little bit on some of that. Um, and, and that's the filler part. Um, but as Smash, you alluded to and as Jen, uh, Jen Walters, uh, sorry, not Jen Athey, uh, <laughs> although Jen Athey probably could, would have alluded to this as well. Um, as they as, as you both alluded to, this is uh, an inconvenient wedding episode. What is a wedding if not inconvenient? What is the flow of the narrative and this wedding episode if not inconvenient to the flow of the narrative? So it's it understands that it's a filler episode. It understands that it's going to interrupt the narrative. And I think it plays with that. So I think that there is something kind of smart to be said um, yeah. in 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 how it winks at the camera every single week. So I got to appreciate that about the show. Absolutely. And not just a wedding, but a wedding on a Thursday. Even more <laughs> life interrupting. Who gets married on a Thursday? <laughs> I've gotten to a wedding on a Thursday before. <laughs> My sister got married on a Monday. So it was nice. $1,600 cheaper for the venue. I can't blame them. You know, also so. the Thursday, apparently, from what I heard. But um, yeah, I I guess if you were looking to save money and I think Lulu is, is the name of Jen's friend. Um, she's just the know, worst. She is the worst. <laughs> so I, you know, you know, she's the type of cheap bride that would totally pick a Thursday, even at the inconvenience of everyone else, just to save a couple bucks for herself. I think you know? especially at the inconvenience of everyone else, mm -hmm. because she wants everyone to be doing exactly what she wants them to do. Yeah, bridezilla. Oh, Which terrible. still then blows my mind how you did not, how it didn't come up ahead of time that like, oh, Jen, I'd, I'd rather if you just be just Jen for my wedding. You know, ahead of time, that's not so bad. She can obviously make sure she's got the right dresses that fit. Yeah. And apparently this wedding was pretty rushed because did they do no bridesmaids activities before? Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they iron shirts, apparently. Or just Jen. Just, <laughs> no, just Jen. Ironing duty. That's, oh, my gosh. That's that's why it's called Just Jen, because it's yeah. Just Jen ironing shirts and cleaning up at the party, which was which is a terrible thing to do. God, I yeah. hate you. You're such yeah. a jerk. She's the worst. And, and the lack of awareness because the whole staff quit because of how I was treating them. Like, <laughs> that's not a clue, Lulu. <laughs> but honestly, I wouldn't complain about walking down the aisle with Jonathan. See, uh, the, that's the dog, I mean, right? Yes. Yeah, leaking, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, Just yeah, out I, at an arm's length. 
<laughs> Trip. I think it would have looked even cooler if she was She-Hulk and the dog because it's just like the, the huge and the mini, you know, next mm-hmm. to each other. Yeah. I know. I think that I would, I'd appreciate that. But yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I think just going through the episode, um, you know, we start, I, I, I'm kind of wondering because the episode starts out really with uh, Jen getting the package and it says like, you're a bridesmaid. I mean, like how long before the, how, how you know, many days before the wedding was that sent? I'm kind of wondering, because if it was like sent the week before, you know, like that's definitely Right. Was she filling in last minute? Was there a huge, you know, few weeks time jump? Was it, you know, a last minute wedding or was is it? That's why it almost seems like there's something sinister going on. If it was so last minute, is it more than just, you know, oh, I want to show off to my friends that I know she Hulk without she Hulk actually taking any of the attention from me? Or did someone approach her and be like, oh, you knew her back in the day? Uh, it wouldn't be really that suspicious if you invited her to this event. Which that's way? actually very true. Yeah, the elaborateness of that—they call them like bridesmaid proposal boxes. Apparently, I've heard. So I know <laughs> we just propose for everything now. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. so that was so elaborate. Well, first off, if I had had anyone ever send me something with that much glitter, I would turn into the Hulk and we would have a chat because that was just a. <laughs> They'll be but, getting an um, invoice from a cleaning service. That's right. <laughs> In return. Uh, and if my cat gets involved, probably the vet. So um yeah, just the whole time she's opening it, it's so ornate, but she seemed so surprised by it. And I feel like you're not going to put that much effort into someone who's ex- who, you know, who isn't mm-hmm. expecting it. Right. Um, I've only been a bridesmaid twice. I've been asked to be a maid of honor once. And that was like, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. And she's still not married. So I'm not holding my breath at this point. Um, but she would probably be a bride. She's not watching this. Please. Um, <laughs> she would probably be a bridezilla like Lulu. So I'm kind of glad that she's not even in California anymore. It's just, it's, and it's a tough thing. Cause like she said, do you say no? How do you say no? Someone asked you to do this special thing, but my would be like, look, I haven't talked to you in 15 years. So um, why are you asking me? You know, <laughs> her career is the perfect yeah. excuse. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. I absolutely cannot take that much yeah. time away from, from work. Yeah. Best wishes though. Yeah. Checks in the mail. Yeah, here's a gift card to Crate and Barrel. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Where are you registered? And I, I'd honestly just be like, do you see how much glitter is on my floor? That's a hard no. Okay, because what you've done. No, I'm joking. I'll be vacuuming um, that day. <laughs> no, I, I, that's honestly how I was going to ask you guys to join the show. I was going to send you guys glitter bombs um, and just like explode them in your faces. Um, no, that would be horrible. Um, but uh, poor, poor Jen. Um, uh, you know, we, we do, we still love Jen. We, we always sympathize with her whenever just bad things happen, um, you know, and including glitter sweeping. Um, I do, going back to kind of what you said, Jen, about Nikki. Nikki is kind of just the heart of this show. I really love yeah. her so much. And just being there for her, even when she has to, like, go through this wedding and, and help pick out outfits with her and everything like that. Um, what a trooper, what a good sport, you know, I mean, she's always there for her and everything like that. Um, she gets, she gets a really nice storyline to shine here too. Um, and in this episode, yeah. I think, um, you get, what, what, yeah, yeah. What, what were you guys thoughts on the B plot? Um, just this, this really terrible Mr. Immortal guy. <laughs> um, needs to go to jail. <laughs> yeah el- elaborate on that let's get into it <laughs> dude needs to be investigated like if he's not already under someone's eye like as soon as the case is over mallory needs to turn around and report him to whoever i don't yeah. know what kind of what kind of deal that would uh violate what kind of confidentiality contract or whatever um but yeah, all these poor women over all these years just absolutely had, you know, this pretty much cut and dry case of like, we've got evidence of you having all these different identities. And then Nikki steps up and is like, you know, I can handle the the human side of this. And Mallory's like, okay, well, I got the lawyer side of this. And they, they made a really good team. It was really great to see. They really did. Um, Jen, thoughts? 
Um, I was like low key waiting for Renee Goldsberry to break out into he had it coming. Um, just because <laughs> one, I feel like not having her sing at some point is a waste of, of her amazing talent, but also he had it coming like, but it wouldn't do any good. Right. Cause yep. he would just respawn, I guess. Um, can they put him on that, that one prison underwater prison? Raft. Um, yeah, yep. the raft. Um, call damage control. I don't know. Send him up with the scrolls. Something. Just get rid of him. I He's, would be uh, happy if they did. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so funny. All their stories. Like I had. I paid for a ten thousand dollar New Orleans jazz funeral. <laughs> yes, his <laughs> husband. I was his like, husband even. Like. Yeah. Um, but he was. He was the worst, and he was so. He said he was pithy. No, he was glib. He was just like, man, eh, it doesn't matter. I'm just gonna do it again. So yeah but mid meeting mid meeting they had to sit him back down he was gonna go for the window again <laughs> which like <laughs> you're liable for the security vehicle you landed on any of the people who witnessed it in theory could uh sue him for emotional distress oh, yeah. like i had to witness you die but you didn't die i still had to go through with that that's right i feel like that Pay would up. be worse to see him get up and walk away yeah so, even more yeah, of a no. I wonder what his solution would be if he does get in that kind of legal trouble. I mean, like, are you going to kill yourself on top of killing yourself after people have seen you resurrect? I mean, you're not going right. to get out of this at all just because you, like, throw yourself into, in front of a bus or something, bro. I mean, like, ugh. there's a lot of countries in the world, man. It's just uh -huh. <laughs> you can learn That's more true. languages and then, <laughs> you know, just disappear yeah. somewhere else off himself in india and then off himself <laughs> in the philippines and off ugh, mm -hmm. he's terrible and, and mad props for uh, to david pa uh pasquazi um mm -hmm. what, i forgot his name um pasquazi. Right. yeah i i who who played mr immortal um for literally becoming disney plus's go-to guy for a weaselly terrible person because he was also in uh the book of boba fett um you know playing the aide to the mayor and he was also a weaselly piece of crap. Um, he was a Twi'lek. Okay. Um, and yeah, he was just he was just the worst. So um, I didn't recognize him, but I knew the voice because of, of course. The, of exactly. He popped up on screen and it was instantly like, oh, this guy I know from <laughs> I, I know I don't like him from something else too. <laughs> get that weird feeling. <laughs> it, it, he was just missing the Twi'lek. Uh, mm -hmm. He just needed know, the um, tubes coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Same tubes. character. We, guys, we have our first redemption of Namdo um, from Cuball nine, uh, 197740, who says hydrate. So everybody, drinks. <laughs> Important. Thank you. Thank you for redeeming those points, uh, Cuball. Um, Thank you. Yep. Definitely. Hopefully that, that quenched your thirst for seeing us quench our thirst. Um, so, yeah. Um, cool. All right. So uh, agreed with you as well, Jen, that Renee Elise Goldsberry, how, how, first off, how wonderful is she? She's just good at everything. I, yeah. I'm super jealous of that, but I'm also enamored with her because of it. Um, I, I wish she'd rap here. I wish she'd sing here. I wish she'd do everything here because she's just amazing at everything. Um, but but I, I love Mallory, actually. She's, such a, she's just the epitome of a damn good lawyer, you know, um, and uh, a seasoned pro. You could, die, you could definitely see why Jen would be a little bit intimidated by her, but also a little bit jealous of her. Uh, not that Jen's not a damn good lawyer herself. She's, she's phenomenal. But, but the power and the, just the presence of uh, Mallory, and in my opinion, is just, is, it's always wonderful to, uh, to, to see her on screen. Um, I, I feel like um, I, I know that she's friends with uh, Kat uh, Kioro, um, the, directors of, uh, the director of the She-Hulk episodes, because they, used, they did... Uh, girls five ever for um you know a, a while ago oh, yeah. oh, um yeah. but but yeah um so i'm wondering if she she dragged her into this and uh the show's so much better because of it you know so yeah um now jumping from the legal world and back into the wedding uh obviously you know with lulu being just a terrible person and everything like that uh the wedding gets even worse because a more terrible person shows up in the form of titania um we I, I, I will. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I absolutely love Jamila Jamil. Uh, she's just she's amazing. Um, I think I wasn't here to talk about the fifth episode, but she's one of my favorite things about that because she's just selling this horrendously toxic, terrible human being. Um, and and she, she shows up here. Uh, you know, she plays the 
oh, you sound crazy card to Ugh. Jen. The gaslighting. Um, it's not yeah. all about you, Jennifer. Yep. So horrible. So horrible. And and you know that she's just dating that schmuck just so that she can go to this wedding and yeah. screw Jen over. Yeah. Um, yeah. How And how'd she find out about it? Was this all a coincidence or was there some digging that had to be done? It's, you know, that by the end of the episode, we get a little glimpse that, you know, someone might be having their eye on Jen, but, or, mm-hmm. you know, is, is Titania affiliated with them or. Right. That's a very good question. Um, you know, my, my theory is no, I'm, uh, I, I'm thinking that there is a larger, there's a larger presence afoot um, that I think it might be the boss of the wrecking crew. Um, the people that are trying to steal Jen's blood. Um, and I half wonder if maybe he's also got his eye on Titania. Um, but, uh, and, and I say I in the literal sense, because I feel like he might only have one eye right now. Um, and no, it's not Fury, just for the record. I think that it might be somebody else, someone big and less jolly. Um, but that being said, um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to know what you guys thought. I mean, do you guys, do you think Titania might be in cahoots with the Wrecking Crew, I guess? Uh... There's there's a chance, um, you know, Titania seems really insecure when that fight starts. She's more concerned about looking around at what, you know, the crowd is doing, what the crowd is thinking of the fight going on rather than focusing on the fight itself, which the, the purpose of the fight itself, she literally says, like, I was the strongest, I was the toughest, and now suddenly I have to prove it, like. Who's asking her to prove it? Who was she showing off her strength to before? Where did her strength come from? And if now she considers it not enough, is she going to go, I mean, does she need to go back to where her powers come from, came from and be like, hey, I need to step it up. You know, she's, she's already got her veneers, her teeth, because her regular teeth weren't good enough. She had to get the fake teeth. Her regular self wasn't good enough. She had to go out and get some powers and now her powers aren't good enough. Okay, what's the next procedure we can get, we can get done? And if who's 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 the plastic surgeon in in Beverly Hills, <laughs> giving out superpowers along with lip injections and Botox? Jen, what do you think? <laughs> um, I've been doing a rewatch of The Good Place, so it's such a flip to see to go from from Tahani. Uh, yeah to Hani. I'm like her character <laughs> uh, from Tahani to then Titania, who's you know, Tahani, her motives weren't pure, we know, but I think deep down she had a good heart. She did want to help people, but she just felt so trampled on by her family, right? Yeah. We don't know any of that about Titania yet. Yeah, we might learn it, but the same, I noticed the same thing with her confidence, which is interesting because both she and Jen lack confidence. Like, Jen doesn't even have confidence in herself as She-Hulk, and she doesn't have confidence in herself as Jen, so I think she's just really kind of lost in between what Titania from her powers, from whatever procedure she's had done, her veneers and this persona she's built up, that's her confidence, but it's a facade. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't know if she's working with those folks. I think that might be too easy of an answer, but she's definitely getting intel from, from somewhere. And I, I feel like she's at least behind the wedding invite. You, you both are right. And you're bringing up good points. I, we don't know anything really about Titania. You know, I mean, like outside of the public perception of her sp- spray painting She-Hulk billboards on Sunset Boulevard and stuff like that. No, sorry. Best best marketing campaign that ever, by so the way. That was so funny. Oh. <laughs> um, but I, w- I will say this. Um, my theory that I was alluding to, uh, you know, um, I actually do think Wilson Fisk is behind a lot of this. Um, I think it's very, very possible that um, after New York uh, in Christmas, he decided to go west, um, you know, and now he might be pulling the strings here. It'd be very easy for him to manipulate someone like Titania. And, uh, you know, Smash, you, you kind of alluded to who she's trying to prove herself to. Maybe she's trying to prove herself to the kingpin, you know. Um, and it, it, I, I don't think that you can get any more you know, in a show that's really about female empowerment and really about strong women, what a better bad guy, like main villain than one of the most toxic men out there, you know, um, who's just bag is just 
domination, domination and power. Um, plus, it would also give an outlet for a Mr. Murdoch to potentially a, a reason for him to come to Los Angeles, um, which is my theory for maybe how all this kind of comes together. So yeah. I'm not know. just there to pick up a helmet. You can have helmets <laughs> shipped first class. Couriers can do that. Save some 18 bucks shipping. Yeah. That was that's, that's, a, that's a lucky coincidence. That's uh oh, I gotta go to LA and my helmet's gonna be ready. <laughs> Two birds. Perfect. Right. <laughs> Might as well. Might as well. Uh, or he leaves the red suit in New York and his his yellow suit is there in LA, and that's what they're he's... two different people, guys. Uh... There's definitely no coincidence with Matt Murdoch's <laughs> travel pattern and the red devil and the yellow devil, none whatsoever. <laughs> I'm trying to remember season three of Daredevil, if this is a direct continuation of the Netflix shows, because there's varying testimonies about this okay. being a reboot versus or, or being a separate version of Matt Murdock in this universe versus the Netflix universe. But I'm, I'm trying to wonder in the end of Defenders, he fakes his death. People think he's dead, but I feel like he comes back and people know that he's alive in season three. So I if if he if people think that he's still dead, you can get away with Daredevil traveling by coastal and not no one picking up on Matt. But I'm pretty sure he's alive. So yeah, you're right, Smash. People are just going to be like, wait, Daredevil and Matt Murdock are in LA at the same time? Curious. Yeah. Didn't work out so well for Peter Parker. <laughs> no. it, it did not. Yeah. Uh, but you can always just magic spell your way through it. And, you know, he just so happens so to know well. someone who knows happened. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we do have cue ball back. Um, can I make a comparison? Jen Withers and uh, I think he means Walters. Um, I, I hope I, I'm guessing you meant Walters cue ball. Uh, forgive me if I'm, I'm mistaken, but um, Jen Walters and Cara, uh, Cara Danvers, AKA Supergirl are kind of the same awkward character, just scared and confused about their own powers. I can kind of see that comparison. Um, you know, I think uh, obviously with the MCU, nobody has secret identities. I think Cara, Dan um, you know, Cara, um, has has her, you know, secret identity. So there's the mousiness to her, and you know the the confident Superman, um, Supergirl, sorry, um, side to her. Whereas I think Jen Walters, um, even though she has the two sides of herself, um, yeah, she's still she's still a little bit more confused and scared and a little awkward as Jen Walters. Um, just because she knows, and this is this is kind of the sad part, and one of the parts that I really like that they touch on. Um, you know, everybody everybody wants and likes She Hulk, but no one really seems to to mind Jen much, and that's just that's just kind of sad, you know. I mean, hmm. I I totally love uh, Just Jen, and you know who else loves Just Jen? Josh, uh, the nice guy, nice guy Josh, who approached her at the wedding who I legitimately thought was going to be a member of the Wrecking Crew, just waiting to stab her and take her blood and then run off, which would have been horrible. But thankfully, um, the episode plays out without that happening. What did you guys think of Josh? I'm still suspicious of him, just because I'm <laughs> suspicious of everybody until we get a big reveal. Um, you know, of course, he seems sweet on the surface, but I'm like, uh, too good to be true? Almost <laughs> always, but probably not, maybe. Eh. Um. So yeah, I, the, the little wave when she when she busted in as as Hulk and looks over and just sees him kind of smiling like, oh, what a pleasant surprise. This girl I was talking to is also she Hulk. How nice. And her little wave. Um, but You're yeah. totally right. He's got to be dirty. <laughs> he did want, he didn't want to see dirty. her Hulk hair when she mentioned it. Yeah, He, he was <laughs> interested in that. So. I mean, I, I honestly feel, yeah, I, I'm, it's, it's always the case, right? The oh, kindness is suspicious. That's How nice. sad is that? Yeah, I don't care about that. He totally cares about that. Oh, Josh, no, don't, but... don't be an ass. Don't mm -hmm. turn out to be a jerk. And weddings, you know, you get romance on the mind and maybe you start to get ideas. So he probably just, oh, she's sitting all alone. I saw how, maybe she saw how Lulu treated her earlier. Mm. It's like, ah, it's easy mark. So we don't know his motives. Um, he seems nice, though. He does. Um, he seems, I don't know. At first, I was like, oh, he's genuine. Then I watched it again, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't think we can trust anything in this episode, just with Titania showing up and the apparently last-minute invite, because the show doesn't seem to be, like, moving along in time with big jumps or anything. It seems to be pretty linear. So, um, yeah, I want, I want him to really just like Jen, though, because 
I feel like at this point, especially that that courtroom scene that she went through, listening to all these guys who went on the dates with her and the one guy saying that she's just not his type when she's regular Jen, I feel like she deserves him to be genuine. But I also have a strong feeling about any Marvel heroine that they don't need a man. So mm. yeah. there's that. <laughs> So it's kind you of going against superheroes. You don't need no man. That's right. Yeah. I mean, like you guys have powers. You guys have it all. Like you're, you, I mean, you've got teams, you're leading the teams, you know, yeah. uh, the men just honestly complicate things a lot more <laughs> and kind of get in the way. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, what I kind of love is, is we're in addition to She-Hulk, we're getting an entire movie um, in November, that's that's really going to be centered around female empowerment um, with Wakanda Forever. And obviously, you know, both for obvious reasons, but also kind of for wonderful, you know, a, a wonderful happenstance to come out of a tragedy. We elevate the roles of characters like Ramonda and Okoye and, uh, you know, um, uh, sorry, uh, Shuri. Um, sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, like, I kind of like that we're, the future of Marvel is looking a lot more female. We're getting very close to A-Force. Um, if you guys had a chance to read the A-Force comics, the roster is pretty much almost there, right? We've got a She-Hulk. We've got a Carol Danvers, you know. Um, we, we, we're getting, we're probably going to pepper out the uh, the A-Force with a lot of the Wakandans, um, with uh, Kate Bishop, maybe, with, you know, um, Ms. Marvel, all that. Um yeah, it's it's very possible. I, I'm I'm rooting for an A Force led by Jen Walters in the future. You know, um, hopefully. But yeah, um, yep. I feel bad for Jen because just having like the worst time ever. She does exactly what she what anyone would do at a crap wedding that they're you know not having fun at. Uh, raid the cash bar, which by the way, how evil is that? That's in an entire series set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we were six episodes in the most evil thing is a cash bar at this crappy at a horrible wedding wedding yeah and uh Ta- tatiana who i just absolutely love um she is she is just owning the drunk performance here um and i kind of love it she's just getting out on the dance floor and and just owning that um i don't know any thoughts on 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 this entire sequence just her getting drunk and her just blowing off steam my go-to drunk wedding dance song is actually Footloose, so I was kind of hoping it would be Footloose, but <laughs> bro- Walking on Broken Glass was a good choice also. So, you know, um, again, I think she doesn't let herself cut loose very often. And I think at this point, everything had been like, Jen, iron knees, Jen, carry this leaky dog, um, Jen, clean up these glasses. And she's like, you know, what? I'm just going to go have fun. Forget yeah. the wedding, forget Lulu, forget all of this. I'm just going to go have fun. So I think that was just her letting her her hair down a little bit as much as she will let herself do it. Yeah, you know, once the ceremony is over, that's, you know, pretty much the end of, of bridesmaids duties, especially if your you know, bride's dress isn't so big that she needs help going to the bathroom. Right. Um, that d- didn't seem didn't seem like a four person dress that needed lifting. Um, but yeah, just the. uh Tatiana Manzlani just just nails the absolute little charming that she's, you know, so good at lawyering the law as she's talking to Josh, um, Joshua. And uh, yeah, she just pulled it off so well, even even, you know, being beat up, which she takes a punch pretty well and then just laughs it off. Like, why are you beating me up? This is is dumb. And I, I just wish she hadn't transformed. I wish she just stayed her little her little self and just been like, you're not gonna hit me because I'm because I'm little and you're big and mean. And if I yeah, but then you know she gives in and uh, uh, I absolutely loved when she didn't know how to do it at first or couldn't remember. Yeah. <laughs> too drunk to know how to remember to to transform into my superpowers. Yeah. I do love that. Whenever, whenever you know, Jen is she all can't get drunk, but then when she's back to Jen, she's just all over the place. So right, regular person is getting drunk like crazy. Um, that was a really funny moment, and mm-hmm. just to put it in first person too, where everything's just like blur. <laughs> so you're like, yeah, this isn't going well, and then it blacks out, and then all of a sudden it's clear again. She's like, oh, um, that was that was actually really clever. Um, yeah. 
perspective shots putting us, you know, just right into Jen's head, you know, along mm-hmm. with the the fourth wall breaks. We really know what she's seeing and what she what she's thinking down to, you know, the differences in her eyesight between, you know, drunk Jen and sober She-Hulk. Mm-hmm. I think, um, you know, the story, of course, shifts back from the horrible wedding to um, her checking in with, or sorry, uh, us checking in with Nikki. And that's kind of when Nikki's basically just schooling everyone and just, you know, going through spouse by spouse by spouse. Because admittedly, you do want to be fair with all of these horrible, these horribly, uh, you know, um, slighted victims, you know, Um, and, and, you know, some of them feel like even though one person might get like a fraction of his fortune, the other one was with him for three years, but still had a kid. So how do you do all this? And Nikki's just like hammering all of them out with these great solutions. Um, you're going to maintain eye contact for 15 seconds and then apologize to her. And he's like, oh, I don't want to do eye contact. She's like, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. I was just like, yeah. Um, Ginger Gonzaga, how good is she? Uh, any thoughts on Ginger and just the scene in general? She's delightful. Um, you know, you, you and I were lucky enough to get to go to the, um, the launch and my friend and I were walking towards the viewing area and this lady goes, Oh my gosh, you guys look so great. And we're, we turn around and there's this beautiful woman in this black dress. We're like, you look great too. And I turn around and there's Ginger Gonzaga's character poster. And I was like, so I really feel like Nikki is ginger and vice versa. She just in, even in that brief, you know, five second encounter, just the doll and Nikki comes across as that. And she's, she has all the confidence that Jen doesn't have. Um, and I think she feels like she has enough for Jen and can kind of rub off on her in that way. But I also think she's a heck of a lot smarter law wise than she, she gives herself credit for and definitely than anyone else does. Cause Mallory was like, you're really good at this, you know? So, um, it was, it was just a great scene and every scene she's in, she, she shines. It doesn't matter who else is in the, the scene with her. Um, you know, she just, she's the spotlight is is 100 percent on her at least for me i just really enjoy the performance she gives week after week 100 smash <laughs> yeah no just absolutely agreed nikki as a character is a is a bright spot um especially after you know their deep dive into you know that creepy website okay. uh intelligentsia and you know deciding whether or not they need to tell jen about it and you know okay no we should protect her well-being and then turns right around like, no, of course, I'm going to tell my best friend about this. There's nothing I'm not going to tell her if it involves her, you know, death threats against her. She needs to know, which we'll find out if that's going to be a, a problem or not. Um, right. Personally, it's probably, you know, a little better to be at least think you're one step ahead um, from Nikki and Jen's perspective. Oh, we 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 know that we've got this target on our back. Um, at least awareness of it. Um, but it also makes me annoyed that where the heck is Bruce? And yeah, yeah, yeah Jen was um, leaving him a voicemail at yeah. one point in this episode, wasn't he? Was. Wasn't she? Sure. Yeah. 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 And like, hey. uh, what do you have a theory about that? I mean, we know he's off planet, right? He, we yeah. saw him speeding away in a spaceship. Yep. Uh, a Sicarian's, Sicarian's one too. Sicarian's ship, yeah. Yeah, but wasn't the only way to get there through the devil's butthole? so that's right like it only lost things could find their way like you had to find the planet by accident but somehow they got out and but now they've got a regular path there through you know just whatever space yeah Yeah. they got some splaining to do marvel faster i i I will take whatever content they give me (laughs) (laughs) let's be honest that's me that's me too trust me Uh, jen theories I uh, I don't really have any theories because I started to go down a rabbit hole about Hulk and and She Hulk and I I read too much and overloaded the circuits in my brain. Um, but I I mean okay so Sakar yeah. we know Thor has been there yep. and we have a Guardians of the Galaxy movie coming. Yeah. Um, we also and Thor was the Guardians recently. Um, Guardians has a Christmas special coming. 
I hope it's yeah. not tied into that. That would be a little weird, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't really have any theories because I try not to do that too terribly much because in my head it becomes canon. And then when it doesn't happen, I'm like, oh, come on. But um, you know, I also, I just sometimes like the stories to be told to me, which at first I could see how I'm like, oh, that's, that's a, I'm not a lazy fan in that regard, but I, I enjoy the stories they tell me. And I don't think I could write them better, even though I'm pretty sure they pulled the end, the very end of end game out of my brain. Um, that's exactly how I would have ended it. But, you know, for the most part, I'm, I'm content to sit back and not think too hard about it. Cause then if you think too hard about it, you see holes. Yeah, too. Of course. So <laughs> comics. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, they and they do so much and then everything changes in the next run and yeah, my old brain can't hold all that together. So yep. I just, just take it as it comes. Again, comics, uh, they always retcon everything. They always change you know, holes yeah. everywhere. That's, I get it done. I'm totally with you there. Um, by the way, uh, Cue Ball redeemed another one for us. Guys, hydrate. <laughs> Good looking out, Cue Ball. Yes, thank you very much. You can tell I'm getting very sweaty. Um, no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, no, but, um, you know, I, I'm... I agree with you, Jen, and yet my brain just can't help it. I always go into to theories. I'm just like, it's a Sakarian spaceship. He's going back to Sakar. That means World War Hulk. That means he probably had his son. That probably means, you know, and, and it's, I'm like, it's very possible for him to have a son because he was the Hulk on that planet for two years and he was a gladiator and he definitely probably had some loving there and everything like that. So I'm, I'm totally on the and it's probably never going to happen. And I'm, I promise I'm not going to be a crybaby about it when it doesn't. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I, I do strongly believe they might have plans for World War Hulk and they might have plans for for uh, Hulk son and everything like that. So I'm very I'm very curious to see if they're uh, they have to address it at some point. Mm -hmm. But then again, I said the same thing about giant celestials getting, um, you know, frozen in the uh, middle of the Atlantic Ocean that has yet to be addressed. I also said they they would have to address uh, Baron Mordo going bad in Doctor Strange one, and they never did. Um, so, what do I know? Um, but at the same time, we are getting a Hulk villain, uh, the leader played by uh, you know the the amazing God. What is his name? Um, such a good actor too, and he was in yes. Watchmen. He was amazing Great in Watchmen. Names, right? um, yeah, I, Tim Blake Nelson. Tim Blake yes. Nelson. The amazing Tim Blake Nelson. Uh, we all thought that they weren't going to resolve that issue. And he's coming back for Captain America 4 as uh, the leader. So that's, who knows? We're, we're, we're probably going to get answers in two decades. Um, so, yeah, there's that. Um, I think the show, of course, transitions to a nice conversation with Josh and Jen uh, that eventually gets interrupted by Jen's sudden urge to... Um, you know, herself, uh, because of how hard she was drinking. Uh, somebody goes to offer to hold her hair up and then completely just like sucker punches her like a jerk. I mean, who the hell does that when you're vomiting and when you're drunk? Uh, Titania does, apparently. Um, we touched on the fight a little bit. Um, but overall, um, you know, the, the comedic part where she couldn't change into She-Hulk but overall, what were you guys' thoughts on the fight itself? I feel like that's the only sense of action that we get in the show this week, really. Um, but but yeah, um, any thoughts? Um, yeah, Jen, I'll start with you. Did you say me? I'm sorry, it blinked out. Oh, yeah, you. yeah, okay, I'm sorry. Cool. No, that's okay. Um, I think it showed a little slip in Titania's like self-control because she's trying to be this, you know, she's just really using every psychological tool against Jen, the gaslighting from the scene with her and Lulu and just really trying to break down Jen's confidence, kind of goad her into becoming the She-Hulk. And then when it happens, she's not, she's getting her rear end beat across the floor, but, and then, you know, the whole scene where she starts to break and yells at the people, is this, you showing this to your 11 Instagram followers? So you start to see her, her need for validation show up. And she, you know, she, she kind of is her own worst enemy, which she perfectly proves by slipping on an ice cube and face planting and destroying her own veneers. I was laughing. So, I mean, and I'm, I don't try to laugh at people getting hurt, but come on, it's Titania. And it just yeah. was so, it was so, it was such a, 
a slapstick type moment with the slip on, you know, the over exaggerated fall and then the pull of her head, you know, hitting the, hitting the floor. And I, then her big concern is not, is she injured? Not that she looked, it, it's her veneers. So it was very Titania, but also it's like, she kind of sabotaged herself a little bit by getting a little too cocky. And then all of a sudden in walk She-Hulk, right? So now she actually has to fight fair. Um, and that's not her strong suit. So it just, I, that's what I felt in that scene when I wasn't laughing. Jamila also just pulls off the veneers oh. moment so well. She's just yeah. so good at comedy. I, I love her so much. Um, Smash, what did you think of the fight? Um, it was great. I don't know if it's, if it's the writer in me, like nitpicking at the logic of it, or if, mm-hmm. or if Titania really just makes that little sense in her decision making. But it seems like, you know, being stronger than She-Hulk is really important to Titania. So, okay, she's going to prove that it, within this moment that Jen's at her weakest, you know, she's, she's drunk and distracted and sick. And so, okay, I'm going to beat her up like almost specifically because there's no cameras around so no one can see that I'm doing this in her vulnerable moment but also I need there to be cameras around so that people know that I beat up Jen Walters and She-Hulk and so when the fight enters the you know main room and suddenly people have their phones out it's immediately when the when the fight's going poorly Titania knows she's losing And it's just like, girl, what is your relationship with social media? What did you hope to get out of instigating this fight? And also, you know, irritated that Jen's first move as She-Hulk is to cause property destruction. Like, uh, yes, the the stomp and the rolling of the bricks to create a freaking, you know, earthquake wave is amazing. But now, you know someone's liable for that property damage lawyer jen what are you thinking <laughs> lulu's not getting her deposit back no hell no <laughs> the staff already hates her <laughs> that's so true um and then you know once the wedding ends of course lulu who's like oh i don't want she hulk in my wedding all of a sudden 180, 180 drunken self slipping yeah. through so yeah what did lulu hope to get out of that you know <laughs> Did she just want people to know that she knew She Hulk? It's such a but bald... not be upstaged by She Hulk, and then it completely right. Yeah, exactly. Completely let it slip that no, it mm-hmm. uh, really just a volatile, vile character. Um, but uh, amazing performance by uh, Patty Harrison. Who, who I think plays her comedian as well, who is in movies like The Lost City, um, really gets you to just to, to just find her as repulsive. And, and I, I thought she did a terrific job of that. Yeah. I think we might have lost Smash. Did we lose Smash? No, okay, you're there. Sorry. You froze for a split stack on my screen. Um, but I think you're good now. Sorry. Um, okay, so we're good. Um, we did get a question in the chat. Somebody was wondering. Um, well, well, I would I well, think is rather... Oh, okay. Oh, we did. Are we back? Yep, we're back. Oh, yeah. All right. Perfect. Um, awesome. Perfect timing too, because uh, we got a question in the chat. Um, somebody was wondering. I would be interested if the Fantastic Four would make a cameo. The reason why I say that is because back in the day in the comics, uh, She Hulk did join and replace Ben Grimm. I who are, um I'm not sure who said that anonymous. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, I I think the world would be interested in anything Fantastic Four because that is literally the only thing that people talk about on social media when it comes to Marvel is anything relating to the Fantastic Four. Remember when Reed Richards was supposed to make a cameo in WandaVision and never made a cameo? Um, Remember when, uh, you know, uh, all of that was supposed to happen? Um, Yeah, no, um, I think we're going to definitely get Fantastic Four in due time. I think they're very much this close to announcing the cast i i mean i'm just speculating because they announced the director uh, matt Uh shackman and because they announced two writers who are up and comers um that uh i'm not familiar with their work yet but what's you know marvel's pretty decent at picking their writers um so hopefully that turns out well so we might get a cast maybe they'll be announced it here in she hulk that would be an interesting way to to bring them into the fold 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I feel like it's too early to replace Ben Grimm since we haven't met Ben Grimm yet. Um, so we'll we'll see. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so after the fight, you know, and after um, the horrendous Lulu accepts She-Hulk as now a welcome wedding guest in the biggest 180 on this show, uh, we do cut back to, as you mentioned, Smash, that scene where uh, Mallory and, and Nikki are looking at intelligentsia. And uh, one of the things I liked about that scene, other, uh, you know, I mean, it's the, the creepy website aside, we're really seeing um, kind of a nice friendship blossoming between uh, both of the two characters, um, really kind of emphasizing and, and further reinforcing the theme of sisterhood that's coming from this show, which I, I really appreciate and adore. I, I am kind of half wondering, though, if that means that, you know, um, even though Jen is uh, Nikki's girl, you know, um, if there's ever some sort of a rivalry between her and, and Mallory, I mean, do you think that Nikki might have the potential to take Mallory's side on things, you know, um, so switch, switch over or something like that to be her paralegal? I hope Nikki doesn't have it in her to pull that because... I mean, the, the first thing Jen said when she was offered the job at JLK and H was I get to pick my own paralegal, you know, and the, the old guy who eats pistachios weird was like, I don't care who your paralegal is. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Nikki, Nikki's clearly, you know, obviously got the potential, I think, to be, you know, more than just a paralegal. Jen knows it and is kind of like pulling her until, you know. Nikki will get up and 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 take care of herself. So, hoping hoping, I don't know. I I I I, I never hope for a betrayal, even though it makes good right. you know good yeah. stories. Yeah. Jen, yeah. how about you? I feel like Jen needs. It's so weird to say that. I'm not talking in third person. Nobody redeemed it. <laughs> um, I feel like Jen needs uh, Nikki. She needs her, not necessarily law for law. But she does, of course, do a lot of, of helpful things. But she needs that connection. They're, like, obviously best friends. Um, Nikki is, in her personal life, everything Jen, I think, wants to be. But she's just so into her law and her job that she she doesn't let herself do that. I don't think Mallory needs anybody, let alone Nikki. She worked really well with her. Yeah. But, um, and, and she, of course, every lawyer needs a paralegal, but I feel like she doesn't have a shortage of people who would want to fill that role. And I agree. It would be, it would be a betrayal for Nikki just to like jump ship and go over, go over to that. And it could set up a, a conflict. Cause I know in the comics, they didn't get along. Um, and that's literally what I know right there, the end of it. But um, you know, I, I feel like this show is so focused on female friendships. And like you said, sisterhood, I don't know that they're going to introduce that type of conflict because we already have our conflict with Titania. Yeah. Um, maybe if there was a season two, which would just make the fanboys cry and I would love it. Um, maybe <laughs> if there tears. was, oh, they're delicious. Is that what you're um, drinking, that's Smash? What, just that's the what, tears yeah. of... <laughs> yeah. I add a little bit to everything I drink. Yeah, it makes it taste so much better. So, Sorry, um, continue. <laughs> that's okay. I just, I just kind of hope we, we, don't, we don't see that because it would feel kind of icky, I think. It really would be a betrayal on everything. Not not obvious, not an obvious narrative betrayal, but a betrayal right. of the show and its themes and the audience um, to just declare all of these things and and be this this the show with a really nice message about sisterhood, only to completely undercut that with with something like that. Um, I think when you think about you know Mallory and when you think about Jen. Um, navigating the legal world that's that's very much dominated by a lot of sleazy men, you know, like uh, who, Dennis, for example, you know, who just sucks. Um, you know, you need allies to to really, you know, persist in this world um, that that's so horribly dominated and horribly uh, offensively driven by by these guys that think that they're doing a better job than you are when you're literally um, kicking their ass every chance that you know they you can in the courtroom. So so I really more than anything, despite the rivalry that exists between Mallory and Jen in the comics, I really hope that they don't go that route here. Um, they are good characters, um, and and I think that they them being there for one another with Nikki 
that's a dream team right there. Jesus. Right. I mean, like you couldn't, you couldn't, you know, get a, a power, a more powerful trio in the legal world of the MCU than these right. guys. Yeah. Except maybe Karen Page, Foggy Nelson and Matt Murdock. That's, that's a pretty, that's a pretty that's awesome. Fair. Thing. So, also but, but, just back to the whole intelligentsia website thing. Yes. I think the fact that Nikki immediately once she was away from Mallory called Jen to tell her what they found means that it from here going forward, I don't know if Nikki would really, once she finds that out, that's going to be a mark against Nikki in her book. So she may not ever say anything about it, but it'll, she's going to push back just a little bit from that. Cause that's, yeah. you know, she just went directly against her basically. One of the things I found fascinating about the website, um, when you really read some of the captions that they created and everything like that, um, I think actually they're smartly written because it's kind of a commentary on what we see in Twitter about She-Hulk as a show in general and She-Hulk as a character in general. Um, it's this very anti, anti-She-Hulk, anti anti-female heroes, uh, really sexist bullcrap um, that, that just gets spouted out there. I hope She-Hulk dies. How do we, how do you kill something like that? All this thing, somebody just end it, all that stuff. You know, I mean, like it's, I kind of love how the writers week after week really try and take aim and reflect back on, you know, the viewership and the fanboys and everything like that, kind of their own toxicity. Um, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, what do you guys think about that? Absolutely. Just like, it's, you know, there's parts of the internet that are like that and you try to pretend that there's not. And yeah. then, you, if you if you're either forced to see it or happen upon it and it's just like god damn it there's just a reminder that there are these awful people out there and you want to do something about it but the attention the the fighting against them is what they strive for and so absolutely that how do you handle something like that how do you tell what's real how do you tell what's you know the basement dweller just you know type and whatever they feel like um when there are genuine threats against you know people with superpowers you know um but it 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 highlighted the you know hate to keep talking about feminism and gender and all this but it highlighted that the real danger to women is unfortunately men and that, you know, the cattiness of woman versus woman in the wor workplace and friendships and all that, that's all played out. Like, that's just, you know, old, you know, sitcom drama for sitcom drama's sake, um, you know, up there with the, you know, I hate my spouse humor. Like, it's just doesn't really fly anymore. Like, and and if we keep this show being like, you know, let's let's keep the women united. There may be issues like with, you know, Mallory saying, don't tell Jen and Nikki does it anyways. That's, you know, normal interpersonal conflict that doesn't have to be necessarily a woman versus woman issue when we've got this bigger threat of, you know, men, whether they're trolling or, or a serious threat or not. Perfectly said, um, Jen. Mm hmm. So I've done the bad thing and waded into public comments on posts about this show. Mm -hmm. um, I have to remember that it's exactly like Smash said, they want that attention. They want you to fight back. And it doesn't matter what you say and how right you are, because in their head, they're always right. They're always going to get the last word and it doesn't matter. So it's, it's wasting energy. It's screaming into the wind to deal with them. But um, even in groups I'm in where we're, everyone in the group is pretty, pretty well behaved, like smaller groups. I'll see, you know, they're, they'll just make some offhand comment about the show when we talk about it, or if someone posts a meme and it's just block, block, block. And I, I just, it bothers me so much because I know it's based on reality and I know people have faced this and I know people get doxxed and people get these kinds of threats and, and I think a lot of people don't really see it as the serious problem that it is. And maybe this show will make them see that it, it is a real thing and it, and it is a real problem. And um, I, I shudder to think how much of that stuff is like actually real quotes, like a couple episodes ago when they showed the comments, those were all real comments from when the show was announced. Yeah. And I think they changed the screen names. I wouldn't have, but then, you know, legal things. So... <laughs> I'm petty, so it doesn't matter. But um, <laughs> it's just, 
it's scary. And, you know, I have, I have kids in their twenties and I'm like, Oh, this, and then my younger niece and nephews. And I'm, I'm like, man, how, you know, thankfully they're all good people. So they aren't going to engage in this kind of thing. And, and I have, I still have those conversations with my kids, even in their twenties about how, how this is wrong. And this is the kind of thing you have to kind of stand up against. And, and I think this show by just shoving it into the forefront and not hiding it as like, Oh, this little secret is, it's going to make it harder for people to behave that way. You know, you're putting their feet to the fire. So I, I like that aspect of it, but now it, it opens up a great, like there's so many ways they could go with the story with yeah. that as a, a plot point. So I couldn't have said it better myself, um, honestly. Uh, and, and I agree with everything that you guys are saying, you know, we're not obviously saying that you can't dislike a show. Um, you know, everybody's entitled their opinions and everything like that, but it does really kind of matter um, if if your reasons are rooted in the content of the show itself, the storytelling, the writing, maybe the, the characters or whatever, or if you're just being a petty jerk, you know, and you just don't like the idea that you're being threatened by the fact that, you know, we're getting a lot of shows and a lot of Marvel content, a lot of Star Wars content with uh, female driven characters or characters of color at the center of it all, you know, um, just look at what happened to Lord of the Rings, look at what happened to Obi-Wan. You know, if you're if you're not going to like Obi-Wan, you know, maybe don't like it because, you know, you don't agree with the character motivations or something. You're entitled to opinions like that. Um, but if you don't like it because the, the Ariel in the Little Mermaid trailer happens to be played by a black actress, even though mermaids aren't real. And even though that actress is crushing the crap out of that oh. freaking song, um, oh, you know, then then those those kinds of comments have no place anywhere. Oh. Internet or otherwise doesn't matter how anonymous you are, how entitled you feel. Uh, and when you think that you have an opinion, that's not the type of opinion that I think really deserves a home anywhere you know um you know but but uh that being said um we are unfortunately and sadly out of time i know that we could talk about the mcu we could talk about she hulk we could talk about female empowerment and things that the world needs to do to change um all day long uh we could do this all day um but unfortunately we can't right now um so uh with that being said i want to thank you both um Please uh, give yourselves uh, outros if you guys want. Um, Jen, uh, where can anyone find you? And um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Instagram at do underscore as underscore Peggy says. Um, you can also find my cat at <laughs> Sir Charlie McFurface because he's he's very photogenic and I need to do something with all this stuff in my photo roll. Um, so he's been my new project. Um, and uh, Avengers, cosplay at Avengers cosplay on Instagram is the Avengers cosplay group that um, Mike and I both belong to so definitely check us out also trying to go Jen into creating a TikTok for Charlie uh I have not been successful yet I I'm might not be there. successful ever but well, you might I'm having to be remember what happened last time that's there when the Instagram go. came about there you go. Uh, the next time that we talk to you, Jen, I'm hoping that you, we, we hear about the TikTok um, and, and the handle for that. So uh, amazing. Thank you so much. And then thank Smash, you. Uh, thank you so much for everything, too. Where can everyone find you? Um, here on Twitch, I am Smash Ketchum OG. And uh, on Instagram, because I don't like spelling stuff out loud, I just wrote it down. I am Stony underscore Bologna. Hold that up to a mirror if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> that is amazing. Um, talk about being just completely on brand with the wedding stuff, the name Smash Catchem, and a lot of green um, with the other screen name. Um, but um, yeah, uh, and for those of you who uh, want to look for me, um, I'm Mike Nalo. I'm a writer for the Nerds of Color .org. I'm also uh, on whatswatch.com, and that's at LA. You can find me online at tidyboyboy182. Uh, but that being said, Thank you guys for joining us for another week of She-Hulk recaps. Um, we've got uh, three more to go uh, and uh, looking forward to every single one of these guys. So thank you as always and good night. Good night, good night everybody. Bye.